Today's video is all about designing in Canva, specifically for thumbnails, but today I wanted to teach you guys the basics of Canva and how to actually design. There's a ton of things about designing stuff for YouTube that I wish I had known in advance. Simple tools in Canva, and I'm just gonna preface this by saying I do use Canva Pro. So we're gonna dive into a whole tutorial on the basics of Canva and how to create a banging thumbnail. This is super important and if you don't know about CTR for YouTube, it's click-through rate, and that's a really important analytic. It means that people are clicking on your thumbnail, so they wanna click that first image to watch further in your content. And it's super important, and I wanna tell you a lot of people don't realize what the average CTR is, so just to let you guys know, 50% of people on YouTube have a CTR of 2 to 10%, and my average CTR is well over 30%. Most of the time it's in the high 30s, so I've definitely honed in on my craft of creating thumbnails. So I wanna teach you guys tips and tricks to thumbnails and using Canva for design for YouTube. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Danny Nicole. I'm a life and business coach. I teach law of attraction and strategy. So if that's what you're into, you should definitely check out my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notifications anytime I post new life-changing content. Welcome to Canva. So you're just gonna go in here and you can see there's tons of different features under Canva, but what we're gonna do today is start by creating a YouTube thumbnail. I put in 1920 by 1080p. And again, that's 1920 by 1080p for the size. You need to make sure that's the right size. The first thing I start with is my blank canvas and I wanna go ahead and create a color scheme. So on here, you're gonna see the regular colors but you can always click a color and then change the grade up and down to make it more dim or more bright as you see fit. There's all sorts of colors on there and I would definitely recommend to try to stick to some form of color scheme so people know your branding. The second thing I'm doing is I'm clicking a font and you wanna make sure that the font is really large and really clear. I've been using League Spartan recently because I think it's a really great clear font that people can read. Most of the time I'm gonna do this at 100 points, but that's something you're gonna have to evaluate. Sometimes you'll make it a little bit smaller depending on how much you're gonna add to the thumbnail, but you definitely wanna make sure that those key words are very large for people to read. The second is adding your photo. I'll add my photo in, and I do have the Pro Tool, so I use the background remover. All you have to do is click on the photo and effects, and then you can use the background remover or you can go online and there's a background remover. If you just look it up, there's a totally different website where you can use a background remover if you don't wanna pay for the Pro Tool and Canva. As you can see, I'm just kind of modifying things to see how I like it and how I want things to look to start out with the initial design. And now if you see here, you can go into effects again over the font and change up the font. Now that I have a clear image of myself and clear writing, this is when I like to go into elements and start to mess around with elements. One thing that people used to like to use would be paint and maybe they'll use that in the background behind the words. So you can always go into elements and type different things and then look up that thing like paint or spray paint or whatever. An important thing people need to know is it's like Photoshop, so you're creating a duplicate layer. So if you ever go over top of a layer and you need to recreate it, you just hit the duplicate button and then you can duplicate it. Obviously, I want to teach you guys some of the basics that I wish I had known. The duplicate button will duplicate anything you're doing in, in case you create a layer over what you did on accident. You can do this to do transparency or opacity to make whatever you're doing in the image kind of a little bit lighter. So sometimes I like to do things in the background and I like to make that background layer a little bit more transparent. You can also mess with the font, and if you use this button, you can literally take the letters and stretch them out if you want them to look a little bit more stretched or a little bit more together, or even the line height between the words that you're typing. 
These are three pro tips that I would recommend to anyone to get your brand known, to get people knowing who you are, what your thumbnails look like so they know to click your videos. Be sure that you're clear with your branding, with your thumbnails, the way that things look as far as font and your images so that people know that it is you. Now I've totally changed things around which is gonna happen in this tutorial because I'm gonna change this total image probably. I sit and I mess around with this for probably a good hour because again, this is art. So you should be looking in those elements to see the images that stand out to you. I can't stress this enough. One thing that I think is a really important tool is to show fo photos of what you're doing. So for example, this video is about Canva, creating a thumbnail in Canva. Why not use the Canva logo? If you're creating something about YouTube and teaching something about YouTube, use a YouTube logo. If you're creating something with Instagram, use an Instagram logo. But do a call to action where when you look at the thumbnail, you know exactly what they're going to talk about in that video. The biggest thing of importance is to include your face, use very clear font, and start trying to brand yourself. When you're thinking about a thumbnail, you need to recognize that you're branding yourself by your face, your fonts, your color scheme. That calls out to you as a brand, and so that when people go to research things on the internet, they'll see it and realize that it's your thumbnail and want to click it if they're used to your content and like your video. Now what's cool is there's also this tool of style. So if you're questioning to create a color scheme or some type of scheme for your thumbnail, there's a really great tool that will pick fonts and put together color schemes for you. So definitely check out that style tool if you're new to design. This will help you to create something that looks really good. Now let's dive into text. What I think that's cool about text in Canva is you can literally go in here and look up font combinations. So what that does for you is if you're new to finding a font and you don't know what you wanna do, you can click on a font and you find something that you like and it will tell you what that font type is. Now photos is gonna be stock photos. So what's super cool about Canva is they give you a bunch of stock photos for free so you're not shopping online like you did in the past. You can literally use these stock photos and even if you don't wanna use a full photo, you can click the photo and then click elements and background remover with Pro and use a piece of that photo in your thumbnail. Now, as I've already expressed, I really love using elements, especially in Pro. You can put in just about anything in there and it will pull up and they're great elements and really great graphic designs for you to add to your thumbnail to just make it pop and look that much better. So definitely do some research, look some things up in elements. You'd be surprised what you find in there, especially in the Pro tool. And you can find a ton of logos as well. Now once you're done in Elements, Uploads is kind of the last major feature, which is to upload images. And what's cool about Canva is they store your images so you don't have to continue uploading. This has been your basics and beginner's guide to Canva. I hope you guys really enjoyed it, and I hope this helps you to create a killer thumbnail with a really high CTR rate. Comment down below if you have any other questions on Canva. I hope you guys really enjoyed this content, and if you'd like to see more stuff about design or Canva, please leave a comment below with what you're looking to learn. I'm so happy to create videos that you guys actually like engaging with, and I hope that you did subscribe and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment. I love engaging with you guys and that sends me onto the YouTube algorithm or YouTube universe so more people can find me and I can find them. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week.